be better than himself. So without further ado, I'm proud and excited to introduce to you the next president of Pepperdine University, James A. Gash. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Ed, for those kind words of introduction. And thank you, Ed, for your two decades of remarkable service to this university as the chair of the Board of Regents. Pepperdine owes you and Paula a deep debt of gratitude for your service. And thank you all for coming this morning to celebrate the next chapter in the Pepperdine story. Before I begin, though, can I get an AKB? <laughs> AKB, AKB, AKB. Sorry, Andy, I couldn't resist. I'm proud to introduce to you this morning my parents, John and Rosella Gash, here down at the front. Who knew, Dad, that 60 years ago when you were serenading that young lady across the room at a George Pepperdine College party, that it would lead to this? Over the past half century, mom and dad, you have given your, your children, my siblings, everything that you have, and we're so grateful for that. But you withheld from me one thing, initials that could be chanted. <laughs> J-A-G just doesn't, doesn't work, so, so maybe today is where my middle name becomes Keith or Kevin or <laughs> Kyle or maybe Katikiro Swahili for one asked to lead. JKG would be easier than JAG. Andy, I used to wonder what it would feel like to follow a superstar. I think of Anthony Aden, the prime minister who followed Winston Churchill in Great Britain. I think of George Selkirk, the right fielder for the New York Yankees right after Babe Ruth. I think of Tim Cook, who's following Steve Jobs at Apple. I no longer wonder what it feels like to be them. During the interview process, I expressed sympathy for the, for the next coach of the New England, New England Patriots. Following Bill Belichick will be a tall order. That's how I feel right now. I imagine that Andy must have felt similarly 20 years ago when he was following the great president, David Davenport, our sixth president of Pepperdine University. But look at Andy now. Look at Pepperdine now under Andy's leadership. I'm confident that if we ask Andy what it was that brought about this tremendous success, he would say, in no small part, the team, the incredible team that he got to work with. And that team is assembled here today. I am so excited to be on your team. I'm sure Andy would also credit his partner and his best friend, Debbie Benton, who served wonderfully and continues to serve as Pepperdine's First Lady. I'd like to take the opportunity now to introduce you to my best friend, to my strongest supporter, to the person who's going to be by my side at every step of the way on this journey, Jolene Gash. so much. Thank you. Um, it's just an honor and a privilege to be with you this morning. I just want to begin by thanking this community for shaping me. You truly have. You have shown me what it looks like to love and serve and do life together. It's a privilege for me to say I've been a part of the community for nearly 30 years. I first set foot on the Malibu campus when I was just a high school student. 
And I came for a youth conference with my youth group from Northern California. And I was so impressed with this place and these people. And I thought, oh, could I go here? No, I couldn't attend Pepperdine. I just didn't think it was going to happen for me. You see, as the youngest of seven children, my parents had made it clear to me that if I wanted to go to college anywhere, I would need to figure out how to pay for it myself. And so I can't say that I'd always dreamed of coming to Pepperdine because I didn't think it was possible. But God, he was dreaming for me, and he was planning for me to be here. He did immeasurably more than I could have asked or imagined. When I graduated from Seaver College in 1992 with my Bachelor of Arts in Biology, I became the first ever in my extended family to graduate from college. During my time at Seaver, I was privileged to be taught by amazing professors like Dr. Steve Davis and Dr. Claudette Wilson. They not only taught me about their subject matter, but about life. They showed me what it means to teach with excellence and what it looks like to open your heart and home to students. I have been so blessed by their continued friendship all these years. They truly are my lifetime mentors. As some of you know, I've been teaching biology and marine biology courses at Oaks Christian High School for the last five years, but this will be my last semester teaching. I'm so excited for the next chapter. Now is the time for me to be fully invested in Pepperdine, in this community. I'm especially eager to find ways in which I can support our students' health and wellness, including their mental, physical, and spiritual health. I look forward to hosting events and getting to know everyone and engaging with students, faculty, staff, alumni, parents, donors, and the community. It will be such an honor for me to represent my alma mater here in Malibu, around the world, and across this country. Thanks. During the interview process, one of the regents actually asked me if I would be disappointed if she was appointed president rather than me. <laughs> now you can see why I was asked that question. As we begin the strategic planning process for the next chapter in Pepperdine's history, we will start with asking why. Why did George Pepperdine, 82 years ago, endow this institution? Because he was committed to the best aspects of the Churches of Christ and founded a college that pursues truth through faith and scholarship. This unwavering commitment to the highest standards of academic excellence and Christian values is the foundation for our future. We will also be asking, why does Pepperdine now exist? Because God created us to be in relationship with him so that all would experience and share his love. And because the most effective way to share God's love is to equip young men and women with God's truth and then send them out to be leaders and influencers in this world. That's what we do, and what we do matters. Our students come to us deep in this process of becoming. And we provide for them a transformative education infused with Christian character and leadership. Over, the next, uh, over my lifetime, I've had the opportunity to see Pepperdine from so many different angles. As the student of George Pepper, as the, the son of George Pepperdine College students, as the spouse of a Seaver College student, as a law student, as an alumnus, as a professor, and as an administrator. In every angle I've seen Pepperdine from has, has revealed another area of Pepperdine's brilliance and truth. But the most profound angle I've seen Pepperdine from is that of a, of a Pepperdine parent. Three weeks ago, I had a chance to sit down and pray with the members of the parents, Pepperdine parents in prayer. Thank you, Kim, for coming and for your leadership in that regard. And to lift up our students to God together 
by placing them at the foot of the cross. As a Pepperdine parent, there's nothing that's more important to me than the spiritual growth of my children. And I'm watching closely as my kids are being transformed by this community into godly leaders. Pepperdine is only as strong as its people, its students, and its faculty, and its staff. To the students today that are here, all that we do, we do for you. We come to work every single day for the sole purpose of preparing you to be the men and women God created you to be. The faculty, I'm deeply inspired by your excellence in teaching and in mentoring and in scholarship. During my presidency, I will be the wind at your back. And to the staff, I am blown away on a daily basis by the dedication and care that you provide to our students through wind and rain and fire and mud. It is an honor to walk alongside you in this journey. Over the next five months, I will be meeting closely and regularly with Andy and Ed and the rest of the Board of Regents and the senior administration to ensure that on August 1st, when Andy hands me the baton, I will already be sprinting. It's becoming increasingly clear to me that under Andy's leadership, Pepperdine is poised to make a quantum leap forward in this world stage. It's also becoming clear to me three pillars are coming into focus. The first of those pillars is faith. Pepperdine is a Christian university, and I will never apologize for that. I will never swerve from that core identity. The day after the Board of Regents named me the eighth president of Pepperdine, I wrote them a letter. This is how I began. Yesterday was a whirlwind of joy and expectation, a day I will never forget. I began my day today on my knees before a mighty God who provides us strength, guidance, and grace. I pledge to you that I will begin every day from this day forward submitting my will to his this is how I ended the letter. I promise to bring the fullness of my gifts, experience, and work ethic to the success of Pepperdine and to the glory of God. I pledge to you that same thing today. I've already begun working with the public affairs and the special events team to start planning a special time of worship and praise and prayer in conjunction with the inauguration events in the fall. And I will continue to seek opportunities as president to draw this community together in prayer and worship. The second pillar is fundraising. Like each president before me, my vision is grander still to move Pepperdine higher still. I'm fully aware that achieving that requires us raising more money than we've ever raised before. But we have a story to tell. I invite you to join me in telling Pepperdine's story to those who are looking to invest in future leaders. Our story will excite a new generation of benefactors who understand that the best investment in future leaders is to invest in Pepperdine. The third pillar is footprint. In the landscape of higher education, Pepperdine is a relative youngster, and yet our footprint is already deep and wide. We do what we do because what we do has transcendent meaning, not because it improves us in the rankings. But when we improve in the rankings, it increases our national reputation, and that broadens and deepens our footprint. Our international reach is already wide, perhaps beyond that of any university in the world. But there are still steep mountains to climb over and dark valleys to descend into. My prayer is that in the coming years we will step out in faith farther still until we embody the words of one of my favorite songs. You call us out upon the waters, the great unknown, and there we find you in the mystery in oceans deep. 
Spirit, lead us where our trust is without borders. Let us walk upon the waters wherever you will call us. May we be strong and courageous as we answer this call. That's what I see when I look into the future. Faith, fundraising, and footprints. But I want to know what you see. During the interview process, I did a lot of talking. And now it's time for me to listen. Over the coming weeks and months, I will be embarking on a listening tour in this community and around this country. I want to get to know you and I want to see Pepperdine through your eyes. Thank you for this opportunity to serve alongside you in this labor of love. God bless you and God bless Pepperdine.